So choosing the SSD for your Creator PC can be very, very difficult because first of all, there's so many of these out there. Second of all, there's a lot of fancy specs that might not mean anything. And third of all, how do you know which is actually better for your use case because some of these SSDs might be good at doing one thing like storing files some of them might be good for cache drives some of these might be good for OS drives some of these might be good for secondary drives but each drive has the good sides and bad sides in this video we're going to take a look at which one of these drives is the best one for creators and who's the sponsor of this video Deepcool and their LT series AIOs feature the Deepcool fourth generation pump which has the optimized micro channel three phase motor up to 31 100 rpm. The FK120 PWM fans are extremely powerful yet silent from 500 to 2250 rpm range and at full load noise at up to 32.9 decibels. The unique geometric reflection design on the block cover brings out an enjoyable aesthetic to the PC build and is easy to install. It comes in 240 millimeter and 360 millimeter sizes and in black and white. Deepcool LT series AIOs deliver high-end performance and is recommended by many. Check them out through the links in the video description below. So I'd love to test more drives but I've tested some of these drives that I have here on my disposal or what I have in the studio. So which one are these? First of all, from Samsung, we've got three. We've got the 990 Pro one terabyte version. We've got the 980 Pro two terabyte version. Then we've got the 980 one terabyte version. This is the Gen 3 drive, just so you know. Then from Team Group, we've got two drives. We've got the A440, which has this heatsink on here. And then we have the Z440, but I've got a few of these Z440s, so. Uh, I left them all out here. Then we've got two from Solidime. We've got the P41 Plus and then the higher end drive P44 Pro, both of them one terabyte in size. Then we've got Kingston KC3000, four terabyte version. This is a very high end drive. Then we've got the new Lexar NM790 drive, that's two terabyte. Then we've got this interesting drive here. This is the Verbatim VI7000G, two terabyte version comes with a heatsink like that. And then we've got one from Seagate, which is the Firecuda 532 terabyte version. Now, in terms of the pricing, and if you're wondering which is the best one for the price, I highly recommend you go check out the latest pricing in the description below. I'm gonna leave all these drives down there because the NVMe drives pricing goes all the time up and down. I might be telling you that to go get this drive because this is the best bang for the buck, but actually some of the higher end drives, which might be even better performing, might be even cheaper by the time you're watching this video because they fluctuate very, very fast and there's deals on all the time. So after watching this video, check out the latest pricing in the description below. First of all, let's have a look at the maximum read and write speeds. Even though these aren't so real world performance kind of related because very often you bottleneck by something else rather than the sequential read and write speeds of the drive. But it's still interesting to know what's the maximum that the drive can do. First of all, look at the read speeds here. We've got basically most of the drive performing very, very similar from Samsung 980 Pro all the way to the top to Solidime P44 Pro. The very, very similar from about 6,700 megabytes per second to the best one, which is the Solidime P44 Pro at 7,152 megabytes per second read speeds. Then we've got the lower end or mid-range Gen 4 drive, the Z440 from Team Group, then the P41 Plus from Solidime, and then the Gen 3 drive, which caps out about 3.6 gigabytes per second, as you can see, very close to the limit there. Then in terms of write speeds, very, very similar story, except now we've got the Samsung 980 Pro, which is a little bit of an older top end Gen 4 drive, has a little bit of lower speed, as well as the Cardia A440, but then all the way from Solidime P44 Pro to the KC3000, you can see they're very fast speeds there. But now the best benchmarks would actually show which drive performs the best in their specific tasks or workflows, because you can use the drive in different ways. So as a creator, I would slot the drives as OS and programs, where you put all of these on. That's a drive that accesses a lot of different parts of the SSD all the time, random read and writes, and then actively kind of works on the like main OS and programs drive. Then we've got the secondary, which is project drive, where you put large video assets on and you're actively working on it, right? Where you're constantly using large files, putting in and read and writing on it, 
but you're working with big massive chunks and then that's that drive then we've got a cache drive which is basically you don't read and write that many big files on it but loads of random little write reads and write speeds of the drive that writes the cache but depending on your program it might write big files on the cache drive as well then we've got something that is data storage file where you store perhaps larger files where you use the drive more as the storing of the files where they don't get actively worked on but they just store perhaps some things like maybe you are using this one of your assets or b-roll file where you've got big files on it but time to time you use some of them but they actually store a lot of them and how good they perform in there the same as an archive drive perhaps so we're going to look at these benchmarks in a moment but first of all i want to say big thanks to the guys who actually made the pc mark uh, benchmarking suite who actually gave me the access for the program to actually figure out a really good way to test the ssds and actually give you a good feedback look this is good at that and this is good at that but i couldn't have done it without the guys at PC Mark. So thanks guys for giving me the license for that um, benchmark. Now let's jump into the first the test which is the PC Mark 10 quick system benchmark and the drives that do well in this test are good for a secondary drive in your system and this is not really project drive but perhaps something that you're looking for just expanding the storage where you put your documents photos and videos and doing everyday tasks but the light tasks okay we're not working with big videos we're not running programs on it we're not writing or reading something of it but perhaps like a secondary laptop ssd or something like that so the drive does a lot of random read and write speeds perhaps with smaller files so we can see how quickly they open photos and works around the files if that makes sense so here we can see that the samsung 990 pro and the solid time p44 pro are right on the top there and they're very close to each other without two percent of each other and they are like the best at those drives then we've got like a secondary bunch of uh, drives which is the kc3000 kadia a440 and firecuda 530 there as on the second and then slowly we come down with all of the secondary uh, drives and then there's like the lower end bunch of drives which interestingly also includes the samsung 980 pro 2 terabytes but as you can see the solidine p41 plus is faster than the z440 Lexar NM790 and the Samsung 980 Pro, which just shows that the solid diamond magic that they do on the, uh, the, you know, their drives and the random read and write speeds on there is, is really, really working well as a secondary drive. So the solid P41 Plus is very, very good for that. And then on the bottom end, we just got the Verbatim VI7000G drive which is actually gen 4 drive but performs worse than the samsung 980 one terabyte gen 3 drive which is just very very interesting moving on to pc mark 10 data drive benchmark and this benchmark shows how good is the drive when storing larger files or perhaps using this as an archive drive or storage drive where instead of working with large files on it you're perhaps storing on it and then seeing how well do we write on it and read from it uh, things like that so we can see that on the top we have again the same things samsung 990 pro and solidime p44 pro there solidime now is a little bit slower than this uh, samsung 990 pro about three percent 2.9 percent slower still very good and then the secondary bunch is exactly the same firecuda kc3000 and cardia a440 and then slowly we're going down and now as you can see the cardia z440 there in the middle ground there and then the verbatim suddenly now is better at storing files or using the drivers more like a storage rather than actively working reading random uh, smaller files they're storing it is better and then slowly going down there interestingly the lexar nm790 is not doing very well in this test and is much lower down in the scope of things here moving on to pc mark 10 full system drive benchmark and this benchmark shows you which drives are very good for the os and program so the operating system and running the programs on it which drive is the best for that and interestingly, the Solid Iron P44 Pro is right on the top, like the best drive you can get for that, what I have tested. Obviously, I'd love to test a lot of the other drives there as well. So Western Digital, Seagate, Adata, all of you guys there, please reach out to me so I can add your drives into the uh, test here as well. But the P44 Pro is faster than the 990 Pro from Samsung and about nine or eight and a half percent. So quite a measurable distance there. Then the KC3000 and the FiQ to 530, very similar there um, for programs there as well. Very, 
you know, good drives. The Cardia A440 and Lexar NM790 are quite good there. As you can see, Lexar is somewhere in the middle ground there with the programs and OS. And interestingly, the Solidine P41 Plus isn't far from the Lexar NM790 there. And then we've got the lower end drives, which is the Verbatim and Samsung 980 Pro, which are on the lower end there. Very good drives still, but not as good as some of the newer Gen 4 drives. Interestingly, even the Solidine P41 Plus would be better for the OWA operating system than the Samsung 980 Pro 2 terabyte version. Interestingly, Kadia Z440 is performing even worse than the Samsung 980, which is a Gen 3 drive, the only Gen 3 drive here. The rest of them are all Gen 4s. And finally, we have the PC Mark 10 drive consistency test. And even though this is not representing real world workloads, I'd say for creators, it is kind of a little bit representative because if you're using large files all the time and working with them, perhaps video editing, photo editing, large files or 3D, you've got big assets, you're pulling them and then working with them all the time, then this is a very good test for this. So I'd say this is the project drive test here for the drive consistency test, even though this is a very, very synthetic and not real world representative because we are writing over 20 terabytes, 23 terabytes of files on it. We're filling the drive over three times and emptying it and we're doing various tests that absolutely make the drive go super hot, run like extreme conditions. But this test will show us which drive can sustain their performance in the very, very extreme conditions. And as you can see here, the KC3000 4 terabyte version is right on the top there. And here, the drives that have larger capacity usually perform better because they have better write speeds. When you write files on a bigger drive, it's usually faster. And if your drive has a DRAM, then it's faster as well, rather than using host memory buffer or some other form of caching. And you can easily see that in this test here. Interestingly though, the Samsung 990 Pro performs right on the top there, which just shows how good the Samsung drives are that under all of the consistency, they perform about 4% within the performance of KC3000 that has four times the capacity and much more DRAM. Here you can see those drives that are the best for the project drives, the FireQ, the 530, right on the top there as well. And Verbatim, interestingly here, is performing the same as the Samsung 980 Pro there, which shows that larger capacity and DRAM will help as you can see there. The Solidine P44 Pro is somewhere in the middle of the pack now, not as good with like consistent hammering on the rights and the Lexar isn't as good there as well. Interestingly, the Cardia A440, which usually performed right on the top there, but now on the consistency test, a little bit on the bottom there. And obviously the Gen 3 drive is right on the bottom. Then the Solidine P41 and Cardia Z440 on the bottom of the list there. Now, when we're talking about consistency and writing a lot of big files on it, these tests aren't all of it because we also have to consider the terabytes written spec, which for some drives is much more than the others. And that might actually change your uh, choice of which SSD to get because if you know that, look, I'm gonna run them in RAID or I'm gonna use uh, a lot of files to write on them, perhaps then going with a certain drive is more beneficial for you than drive that actually offers well, like quite fast speeds, but the terabyte written spec, which often is related to the warranty as well, says, look, the drive can't be used that much. If we're looking at the one terabyte capacity and the terabyte written spec for that, then the usual what you see on the market is 600 terabytes written. That's what we see on all of the Samsung drives. We see this on Western Digital drives. This is just normal kind of a standard for five years, 600 terabytes written. That's like the normal. Anything below that is a little bit of a like, mm, uh, what's going on there? It's a little bit lower. As you can see, the Solidarm P41 Plus is a little bit lower but it's much cheaper as well. So that's why we see that. But then there's some drives that also have it a little bit higher. Like you have the Cardia A440 at 700 terabytes and then the Solidine P44, which is 750 for one terabyte one, which is a little bit higher. The KC3000 is 800, taking it even step further. Then we have the Lexa, which is even higher at 1000 terabytes written for one terabyte. 
and then the fire queue to 530 which is 1275 terabytes written which is ridiculous that's like over 70 percent of the drive can be rewritten every single day for the next five years and then we have the cardia z440 which has a terabyte written spec of 1800 which is the largest i have seen in this this is like a nas rated kind of terabyte written spec for that drive which means that every single day for the next five years you can fill the drive fully like one terabyte pretty much 998 or something like that gigabytes on the drive and then be completely fine if you refill it and empty it every single day now when we move to two terabyte capacity and looking at the terabyte written spec then not all of the drives double in the spec we can see that the cardia z440 is very good at that doubles that fire cuda doubles that Lexar interestingly only gives half of it. So two terabyte, you got 1,500, not double it. Kingston KC 3000 doubles it. And then if you move it up to four terabytes, it also doubles it again, like we see on FireQ to 530 as well. So these are the drives that really double it. And you can see the Samsung 980 Pro and 990 Pro, they all double the capacity then it's double the terabyte written spec as well. The Solidine P44 Pro doesn't double it, but does give you like double the standard, like 600, what we see from Samsung, but not double what we see the 750. But most of the drive double there. But there are some drives that really are alarming, like the Verbatim VI7000G, which only shows 700 terabyte written spec for the two terabyte capacity. And that is a little bit alarming when you're thinking about using this as like a project drive or writing a lot of files on it. Even though it performed quite well in the consistency test, the terabyte written spec is basically saying from the factory that actually um, we, we, we're we not backing um, you know the performance for the next five years as much as like from Samsung. So comparing it to Samsung, it's almost half the performance they're offering for the two terabyte drive. Even the Solidime P41 Plus offers 800 terabytes for the two terabyte drive. So that's a little bit alarming. And that's why it's very important to check the terabyte written spec as well for creators who write big files on the SSD. Now, again, if you do want to pick any of these up, I highly recommend checking out the description below uh, for the latest pricing. And there's also different capacities for these drives. I only tested the capacities I have. Feel free to pick up a lower or higher capacity drives down there. Also, if you do want me to check out or review certain SSD, which one do you think we should add into this list? Then leave a comment below and let me know which drives should we get. And then perhaps um, we can reach out to those brands and then get those tested as well. Now, if you're wondering what is the best bank for bulk create PC to build with these SSDs, then check out the link in the description below. There are four videos down there. You'll find them very easy to find in the description. And there's something for each one of your budget. Whatever your budget is, pick the one that's close to yours. And then I'll explain all the upgrades, downgrades, configurations in those videos. As always, thanks guys for watching. I appreciate you. And do the right thing, whether it's easy or not. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.